Spark is a distributed computing system designed specifically for big data processing. It provides in-memory data processing, which is 100 times faster than traditional disk-based processing. Spark offers high-level APIs in Java, Scala, Python, and R, making it accessible to a wide range of developers. Today, we will see how to set up a simple Spark cluster on our machine and how to write and execute our first Spark job, which processes half a million records in just a few seconds. So stay tuned until the end of the video. I have a CSV file that includes 300K records of demographic data from across the world. It includes information about life expectancy, population and population sex ratio, population density and growth, etc. We will write a Spark job to analyze this data and retrieve results. Let's start NeoVim and create a new Docker Compose file. Here, we will configure our Docker Compose for a Spark cluster. Let's first declare a service for the master node. We will specify the Spark image and container name. Next, we will need to expose two ports. The first port will run the Spark Management Console, and the second port will run the actual Spark Master. We will add a Spark Mode Environment variable to indicate that this instance of the service will act as the master. Finally, we will need to map a volume for our service. Later, we will create a Jobs folder in the current directory, which will be mapped to the Spark Jobs directory inside the master container. With this, our master node is ready. Next, we need two worker nodes. These nodes will perform the actual data processing. The image will be the same, and the name will be Spark Worker 1. The Spark mode will be Worker, indicating that this instance of the container is a worker. We will specify the master address inside this worker configuration. Note that the host name will be the name of the master service, and the port will be the port exposed in the master configuration. The configuration for the second worker will be the same, except for the change in name to Spark Worker 2. Now that our configuration is complete, we will save this file. Next, let's create a new directory to store our jobs and CSV file. Remember that we have already mapped this directory as a volume for the master. Inside this directory, we will create our job. Here we have a CSV file containing 300k records of demographic data from around the world. Let's quickly take a look at this CSV file. The file size is 140 megabytes and it has around 68 columns. The row count is approximately 320K. It includes information about life expectancy, population and population sex ratio, population density and growth, and more. Now let's start by writing our job. First, we will import Spark Session and other important functions for our processing. Next, we will define our Spark application with the name Demographic Insights. Here, we will specify the base path for our input and output files. Using the Spark Red method, we will create a PySpark data frame by providing the CSV file as input. The first statistic we need is the average life expectancy by location. For this, we will use the group by function on the data frame. Once values are grouped, we can aggregate the results using multiple operations. For now, we will use only the average operation on the life expectancy column. We will provide an alias for this value as average life expectancy. Finally, we will order the result by location. We can save this result using the write.csv method on the data frame by providing the output path. Note that all the distributed processing happens inside the Spark data frame. It's not an ordinary data frame like Pandas. Any operation performed on a Spark data frame will be carried out by distributing chunks of data across all worker nodes in the Spark cluster. Next, we want to know the total births and deaths by location. For this, we will group by location and get the sum of the births and deaths columns. Finally, we will save the result to an output file. Then, we will stop our Spark application. Let's run our Spark application. We need two terminals for this one terminal for Docker Compose, and another to run our Spark job. First, let's get our Spark cluster up by executing the Docker Compose up command. Next, we will execute our PySpark job using the Spark Submit command. For this, 
we need to know the container ID of the master. Once we have the container ID of the master, we can execute the Spark Submit command, specifying the path of our PySpark job. Notice that we mentioned the container ID of the master here. Once we hit Enter, the PySpark job will start, and the output files will be placed under the jobs directory. Let's first open the average life expectancy file, where we can see the average displayed for each country. We have two columns each for country name and average. This file total has data for 285 countries. Then let's open the second file, which shows the total births and deaths country-wise. This file as well has data for total of 285 countries. That's all about Spark for today. I have added the GitHub link below, which includes all the source code and the CSV file. Download the source code and give it a try. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more content like this. Thank you.